Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, in and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And hello, welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell. This is episode 81 for January the 25th, our last episode for the month of January. Yay, we made it through January. And I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hey, Constance, your turn. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Thank you, both of you, for meeting with me every week. And I really hope that uh, we uh, can uh, inspire each other. And I hope our listeners feel motivated and inspired and uh, enjoy uh, our discussions. For our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see uh, the uh, video links for our discussion for this week. And this week, I looked at our schedule, and we try to come up with a specific theme each week, and this week is supposed to be like art movement. Got on the YouTube, and so we talked about Rococo, we talked about Baroque, we talked about the classical period, we talked about Expressionism, we talked about modern art. What is left? So I just kind of typed into the search, and I just said, uh, art movement documentary. And up came a phrase that I had heard for the first time several years ago, a phrase called kitsch. About three or four years ago, I was watching an art documentary, and this really snobbish critic was talking about uh, the uh, uh, Thomas Hart Benton artwork. He said, oh, his work is just so pure kitsch. That's the very first time in my life I'd ever heard that word. And I looked it up on Google to see what it is. Wow, it's a pejorative you know that's considered a negative you know why you know and everything. so um i when this week when the uh google or the um, youtube search engine you know brought that up i was like oh okay kitsch art movement what is this all about and there was just tons and tons of videos and it was actually became more of a task of selecting the least boring <laughs> videos for our discussion that just an, a, a uh, tip of the iceberg. I went ahead and printed out from Google, put my glasses on here, the actual definition of kitsch for our listeners who don't know what it is. All right. According to Google, it's a German word, and it's an art or other objects that generally speaking appeal to popular rather than high art taste. Such 
such objects are sometimes appreciated in a knowingly ironic or humorous way. The word was first applied to artwork that was a response to certain divisions of the 19th century art with aesthetics that favored what later art critics would consider to be exaggerated sentimentality and melodrama. Hence, kitsch art is closely associated with sentimental art. Kitsch is also related to the concept of camp because of its humorous and ironic nature. Kitsch art may often contain palatable, pleasant, and romantic themes and visuals that few would find disagreeable, shocking, or otherwise objectable. It generally attempts to appeal to the human condition and its natural standards of beauty on a superficial level. It may also be quaint or quirky without being controversial. All right. It's also the it is is applied by the art critics as a pejorative, and it applies that the work is questioning gaudy and that it serves a solely ornamental and decorative pers- purpose rather than amounting to a work of what may be seen as true artistic merit. How about that? So if you ask an artist and you say, are you a kitsch artist? Based upon that definition, no, no, no way. Yeah. <laughs> so with that in, in mind, I then came across a very excellent discussion from a, uh, he's a, he was a philosopher, historian, a British philosopher and historian, uh, Roger Scruton. And a lot of his videos popped up because he had recently passed away. He passed away uh, January the 12th. He uh, is basically, someone had put together his three discussions in a condensed version because on each of those sections that he talks about, uh, there are, he has videos that are like, an hour long, two hour long conversation. And <laughs> he's very cerebral, very, very, I mean, but he makes some very, very, in my opinion, very, very good points. And he gets around to, uh, to what, uh, the, the art community, the art, uh, uh, the movers and shakers of the art. And of course he mentions, you know, Jeff Coons and Damien Hurst and everything. And, um, Diane, we'll start with you. Did you uh, get a chance to listen to that, listen to his discussion? Yeah, um, I, I always thought of kitsch more as um, stuff that was kind of tacky and cheap and, you know, like the cat um, with the moving eyes and the wagging tail clock kind of thing. And, you know, like knick-knack kind of stuff. And, and I guess that's kind of... When you th- really think about it, that, like Jeff Koons and them guys, uh, their their art kind of falls into that, even though it's on a lo- bigger scale, I guess. But um, yeah, it's 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 just a, a weird. Like he mentions them, and uh, there he call he calls them uh, uh, preemptive kitsch, and there are more like every art movement. There's extremes, you know. What uh, impressed me and got me very excited. Was that since the three of us, we are we call ourselves representational artists predominantly, and the representational art movement, the kitsch, is part of the representational movement. And I was amazed. I mean, we've talked about this before, to where representational art is coming back into vogue, as they say. It's it, it, and kitsch is contributing to that. It is coming back full force. I feel so privileged and excited that. I'm my artwork is part of this movement, you know, and, and uh, it just gives me more joy and more uh, motivation to create more art. And now wh- what is so interesting and with the fact that COVID, there are so many thousands of people out there who are unemployed and and with the the political climate and they're worried about the, the, the state of the world and, and uh, their family, there's been, you know, uh, deaths in the family. They are just so depressed. Now I think that's why representational art and kitsch art, we can step up 
it's our turn. We can bring, and as as uh, working artists, it's now more incumbent upon us, our responsibility to get our art out to the world. You guys agree on that, or am I exaggerated? Uh, making yeah, I think I think with all the stuff that's going on, like with COVID and all the politics and everything that's been happening, everybody has gotten really down about a lot of stuff. And I think um, people are looking for things that will bring them joy, you know, bring the joy back in their life. Because they're stuck at home and they're, you know, they're just kind of wallowing. <laughs> yeah. They need, they need um, something to cheer them up and kind of take their mind off of the all the other stuff that's going on. And I think us as working artists, mm -hmm. uh, we can fill that void. It's interesting you mentioned, because in the other video was that, that late, that elderly lady, she was just so adorable when she was talking to, when she was describing the different things. Uh, when I was growing up, we had one of those cats on the wall. One of those <laughs> tail. Oh, the, the clock in, from the kitchen, the cat with the tail going back and forth. Those are cute. That's it. Now that's kitsch, you know, but. I wish we still had I, my growing up. My house was full. We were full of artwork, but it was all kits. I mean, by the, by the well, day. they make reproductions. If you know of that stuff now, yeah, it's because it's come back in vogue. I wish I had an original. It'd be worth some money now. <laughs> I yeah, wish it probably had, wouldn't work, but you can always put a new clock in it and make it work. To this day, my mother like because the, the last time I visited her several years ago in Indiana, he was laughing at me. Because she had this clock on the wall that scared the crap out of me. She had this clock where it had uh, bird sounds. And as the hand moved around, different kinds of birds would make. would, would make. Oh, I, I've heard, seen that, yeah. I literally jumped out of the <clears throat> one. She had it where a, a rooster would crow at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, I mean, she was laughing at me because I'd be sitting there and all of a sudden I'd jump, you know, because that clock was on the wall behind me, you know, where I was sitting. <laughs> That's funny. I've seen those clocks. They have different birds for each hour. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> so, you know, uh, hey, it, it, other, the, our, uh, you know, our snobby uh, uh, art, the uh, elitist, uh, you know, I mean, well, that's just, you know, that, oh, that's just, a, that's just too, too sentimental. It brings my mother joy. It brings her, and that's why she, you know, she has it. So, um, I guess by this definition, let me ask the question, Diane, do you consider yourself a kitsch artist? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought I was in that category at all. What about you, Constance? You consider yourself a, a, a kitsch artist? It depends on what I'm in the mood to paint. Now, I think some of the abstracts are probably kitschy, but um, when I, to me, when I think about kitsch, I think about stuff that you can get from the dollar store that you hang up in the house or, you know, the little, you know, $5 vases that have cheesy stuff printed on them and, and you know, because there's a lot of kitschy stuff you can get, but the, cat the category is so wide that that's it is wide. It is there's more more in the representational art movement, and it's more of the like there was that one artist who was uh, actually full force uh, going back to uh, uh, bringing back the traditional teachings of the old masters and everything, and the because of the modernness you know movement they pretty much they, they for years they've eliminated that and so i mean what was once when i was growing up we called it traditional art we even they even changed the word they had to come up with representational art the first time i heard that word like what the heck is that oh that's just traditional art you know that's just traditional drawing and painting you know of things you can identify you know so so but he's uh you know there's artists throughout the world that are fighting back and they're you know so there is a more more of the 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 other end of the kitsch like i said kitsch is part of the representational art movement when there i think of kitsch i think of things like ashtrays that have tennessee written on them you know like souvenirs from where what was that that place when you used to travel the name of that place that you could get so many of those really cool souvenirs it was like a candy place 
Or like and it, it, when you traveled, they were everywhere. The travel center, like a travel center in each state. You can get the little, you can get the. Well, there is that, but there was actually, what was it? Stoke? No, Stuckey's. That's who I'm saying. Stuckey's, yeah. <laughs> Remember Stuckey's? When you traveled, you could, if you, it was a great big deal to go into Stuckey's. They had ashtrays, snow globes, flags, cushions for the house. They were either about the state you were in or just, mm -hmm. you know, just kitschy. Now that's kitschy stuff, you know, or little figurines that, you know. Well, like, yeah, Walmart and Target. Or spoons. People used to collect all those spoons from different states mm -hmm. and thimbles and shot glasses and things like that. Mm -hmm. you know? She had all kinds of different states. My grandmother had. Oh my God! They're called knickknacks, and my grandmother just had tons of all the different little things my grandfather would would buy her. And when we were little, that was always we would get our hands smacked. My brothers and I, we'd want to touch them. <laughs> and we want to play with yeah. them. <laughs> Salt and pepper shakers are really cool too, if you can get them from different states. And they, I got some in Gila Bend one time, and they're of cactuses. They're in the shape of cactuses. And I thought they were the coolest things ever. I still have them, you know, and I thought they're just cool. You know, they've now morphed into the, the collectible category because he said yeah. <laughs> all collectibles. Yeah. That's what I think is interesting. When you talk about art movement, so because those are all, that's all art. It's just different, mm -hmm. art, but it's all, you know, art and everything. The one thing in that discussion of uh, Roger Scruton that uh, at the end of the discussion, he gave a quote. I actually love this quote so much that I took it and put it on my uh, Daily Paintworks website where, uh, where he says, says um, real art is a work of love. Fake art is a work of deception. That really speaks to me. It speaks to my feelings about the modernists, the decomps, the avant-garde, the avant-garde art. It really it, it speaks, speaks to me. Uh, yeah, on in that sense, and uh, because really, they're they you know, with uh, for our listeners, if, if you listen to his discussion, he talks about how you know the um, it started with with the shop, and then you know with and with the critics, and they they and then you got the Jeff Coons now, Damien Hirst, you know, putting a shark in the tank you know, from aldehyde and calling that art, you know, and the problem is then. Then you know you get the critics who uh, you know who who act like they're like they're priests you know of religion and they they jump on board and declaring it as valuable and then you get some ignorant billionaire comes along and then buys it yeah <laughs> and then well it has to resonate with people I think sometimes if something really resonates with you then you know they you want to acquire it um, is that but the majority of the people who are who are applauding that kind of art wouldn't even have it in their own home. <laughs> who, well, you know, and the artists are laughing all the way to the bank. So who's to say what's right or wrong? As a for our up and coming artists, you know, you see that stuff. And you say, oh my God, why am I spending all this time going to school? Why am I spending all these hours and hours of of uh, you know working on, on you know on my on my own piece of artwork only to have it neglected and to have it you know and to be told that my artwork is kitsch my artwork is but uh banal and 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 not worth and this is where got me so excited because no your art is worth something because look at the millions and millions of people especially today that are depressed in the world and everything now your time has come your artwork will be appreciated. Don't worry about the critics. Don't worry about the so-called art experts. Ignore them. Work I think you have to do what makes you happy. Absolutely. You know, and it, referring back to a video we once watched from uh, Sergio Gomez when he talked about art communities, you know, people talk, build your own art community, your own little circle of collectors and fans. And you can, and, it's now more than ever available to you on the internet. You have access. You can bypass the gatekeeper now more than ever. So that's what got me excited. 
when, you know, reading about all this, you know, I didn't want to, I know, uh, I wish I could just see the expression of Diane and Constance when they read my proposed discussion. They're like, oh my God, what's he doing now? <laughs> Are we going to go deep in our discussion? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't consider myself an intellectual. So uh, I'm not going to try to begin to, to discuss the, the ins and outs of that, of that, uh, that professor, because it's obviously he was well thought out his discussions. And he's well educated, and he made some very good salient points, and they definitely resonated with me. What he was, you know, and it gave me a sense of of uh, lifting my spirits. You know, that now more than ever, my art has a purpose other than to just do it for the sake of because my daughters want me to do it. No, I have a, wi a much wider purpose. There is a much wider audience out there that. Uh, it, uh, you know, instead of wagging my finger and saying, look, stuff is crap. No, I can show, I can create real art with love and completely ignore all the fake art that's deceptive in you. It's already deceptive, you know, so. Well, I think the art um, in general is kind of like the rest of society where it used to be like there was kind of set um, – uh, things that everybody fell into, like the, the different movements, you know, um, of art as well as fashion and, you know, like even our hairstyles and stuff, like when we were kids growing up. I mean, it was like, you know, things were set for a certain length of time and then they changed to something else. But now it's like everybody can do whatever they want and nothing, nobody thinks twice about it, you know, like, you know, even the, like fashion and clothes and hairstyles and stuff. Everybody's got all kinds of different things going on. Nothing's like no serious trends anymore. Yeah. And the art's sort of the same way. There's a lot of different kind of art around and it's not so cut and dry. So. Well, there's so the world has become so much more populated and everybody's tastes are, are different, you know, so it has to, you know, it, it, it will resonate with somebody. You just, you know. Well, this goes back to the very, that, that introduction video that got, that got all of us introduced to Paul Klein when he says the art market is actually multiple villages and he, his sincere belief that any artist doing, creating any kind of art can be successful. And if you are motivated and you pursue the right strategy and just determining what this and, and the strategy cannot be. We've discussed this in past episodes. You know, we've talked about different recommendations. You know, you, uh, you do this to get so many uh, likes and uh, followers on Instagram, and you do this to get. I mean, all these di there's all these different strategies. You know, what I mean? but uh, like the beginning of the year, Sergio Gomez you know, plan for developing your business plan and he had that structure there and, and he had that free workshop remember you know diana I, thought, I only watched a couple of videos of it there was like five videos i only watched two of them i said no i can't do this <laughs> i know me yeah i only saw the first couple too <laughs> i couldn't keep up with it. the plan I, I was having so many migraines at the time there was no way i could participate in watching any of it so 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 we have to, you know, uh, you as an individual, you have to really look deep inside and everything. But uh, this, uh, as a representational artist, this gives me more, I mean, proud. And if someone asked me, I was thinking the other day, if someone who is not familiar with art, not educated in art, Tom and Joe said, well, okay, Clyde, you're an artist. What kind of artist are you? I said, I, I guess you'd call me a kitsch artist. My thinking is they, in their mind, they would be impressed. Wow, because they don't know what that word means. Now, <laughs> somebody from the art community, if they ask me, and I say, yeah, I'm a kitsch artist, in their mind is, oh, so you're a dumbass artist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's that. It's just like it's a different I would um, aesthetic, you know. Yeah, it's, and it, that's what I would think. It's just. Lacey smiled and I knew exactly what they were thinking already. I, mean, and I would, I, that's, that appeals to my, uh, uh, 
libertarian uh, honorary side. I mean, if I can stick them, I'm going to stick them. <laughs> so, and just by saying that, just by saying I'm a kitsch artist, it's just going to stick in the crawl of some of those people. I, I mean, <laughs> and I would enjoy it. I would enjoy it. So, yes, I can proudly say I'm a bit of a kitsch artist, not 100%, but, yeah, I do, I do create some kitsch works. You know, and look at all the stuff that's on the, you know, on the apparel. The items that have sold across all the uh, websites that I where I sell uh, my artwork is on apparel, different kinds of product, apparel products and home decor products. That falls into the category of kitsch. You know, my art's on clocks. It's on tote bags. It's on puzzles. It's on, on uh, aprons. It's on socks. It's on, on uh, uh, even women's dresses. And and uh, uh, under that definition of kitsch, that's all kitsch. Because <laughs> you can buy art like that in a, in a Walmart store with, uh, you know, different uh, uh, little thing art that's on different things. And as I stated when we were when we were taking that class, now if you remember that Diane, when the, uh, that was kind of that subject, a bit of it that was brought up. And I said, I would be com th completely thrilled and honored to get my artwork in a Walmart store, in a big box store. <laughs> the people, the other members. I remember of you saying that. <laughs> some of them were just, you could just look the expression of their face. They were just aghast. They were like. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, and it was kind of like, you know, the Thomas Kincaid thing. His, his work is on on a lot of stuff, you well, know, like notebooks and and. <laughs> The neg oh, the negativity was just incredible. My fellow students were just, you could just see the expressions on their face like, oh, my God. <laughs> it, it's like as if I had said, I want my well, It's like the, what village do you want to fit in? And that's just a different village. I mean, mm -hmm. some people are serious artists who believe in very traditional work, and that's their serious artist. They're a genre, you know, so. I'm very serious about my work. In fact, if I was. Well, I wouldn't be taking that this class with uh, Kelly Folsom to improve my uh, my painting skills, you know, my oil painting skills. So yes, I am very serious, you know. So that doesn't that that doesn't. Well, I I guess what I'm trying to to say is not serious. I mean, it's just traditional. I mean, everybody has the form of work that they want to follow, you know, and I and I think you know some of the younger artists when they're doing they they want to stay in a certain area of a certain village you know so your village is a different village than their village yep. you know so it just depends on what village you want to live in i mean some people just do pet portraits their whole career and they're perfectly happy with that well you know you can take that and when they turn out get, turn out you can put those on on apparel you know so the point is, uh, I truly, uh, that, uh, that quote from Roger Scruton, uh, it really applies. I can really dig into that quote. You know, the real art is made with love and fake art is made with deception. And my art does not deceive. Some, not all of it, but some of my art is sentiment, very sentimental. Maybe that's kitsch. Maybe not, you know. Uh, but, uh, it is something that I don't worry about anymore. And this, these videos and these discussions I came across, it just made me jump out of my chair with excitement. I, someday in the future, I end up in a, uh, you know, in an art museum or in a major, you know, uh, highfalutin New York, uh, Chicago expo ex exhibition. Fine. But I haven't sacrificed my principle. That's the whole point. I haven't sacrificed my basic principle. Well, and that's the one first rule that you need is to absolutely. follow your heart when you're painting into, many, or your artwork. Two, it's just follow your heart. Many, what makes you happy? When I hear these people talk, when I hear some, and I, I just, you know, I just, I, I shake my head. And I just, they're caught up in the fake art world. They are, they are wrapped up. They're fully invested in the fake art world. And, uh, Okay, if that's what they want, then more power to them. It goes back to uh, 
Gary, what Gary Vanekick always says is, why are you worried about what other people think? You know, do your own thing. So, um, I think we hammered this enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diane's not a kitsch artist. Constance says she's a bit of a kitsch, and I proudly say I'm a kitsch. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the new word. Remember how I told you I like the word Rococo? If I had a pet cat, I would call it kitsch. If I had a pet dog, I would call it Rococo. Can you imagine me calling Rococo a kitsch? My neighbors would be like, what the heck? <laughs> There's, sometimes I come, I come across certain words I just love to say, and I love to say that word, kitsch. <laughs> it is a funny word. <laughs> All right. Well, you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 81 for January the 25th. My name is Clyde J. Kill, and I have, we've been talking here with uh, non-kitsch artist Diane and with <laughs> fellow kitsch artist Constance. <laughs> I hope you folks enjoy listening, and please, please like what you hear and if you also have some topics you would like for us to talk about send us an email my email address is cjkl at sign mystery dash otr.com that's cjkl at sign the word mystery hyphen otr.com suggest a topic that you'd like for us to discuss we're not intellectuals we're just working professional artists making our way through this art journey and trying to do our best. Uh, we sell some art once in a while, but most of the time we just, uh, we have to create art. It's in our genes. We can't help it. So, you know, sometimes we uh, uh, create some success, successful pieces and sometimes we don't. That's part of life. We are living, as Kelly Folsom says, we, we are living the artist's life and uh, happy pain. So I'm going to say bye to Diane and Constance. I'll let Diane say bye to everybody. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Hello, Diane. Our Constance. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you, folks, for listening. I hope we didn't bore you with this conversation. I wasn't too exuberant. But <laughs> I, the, this is something that uh, this subject is dear to my heart. And I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com Dot com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.